Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I stand before you uh, before lunch. So I realise that the uh, longer I go on, uh, <coughs> the hungrier everyone will get. So I'd like to talk to you about a project that's been going on, funded by the European Union under their Framework 7 programme uh, in the last tranche. Um, it began at the beginning of last year. It involves a cast of, well, not quite thousands, but um, at least tens of people, all of whom I've lifted as well as the various different organizations whose logos you can see at the top. So what is this project? I also apologize to anyone from ESA here, because apparently there is some sensitivity about the word IMARS. I, I did a web search on it before I submitted the proposal. I didn't come up with anything, but apparently there was a project here at ESA called IMARS. So uh, the objectives of this program are to try and exploit the databases that have been created by the PSA and by the PDS um, in order to look at change over the last almost 50 years of the Martian surface using automated data mining techniques, uh, quality assessment techniques to, do th to address questions like Ed just mentioned concerning give me all the images that have dust storms in them and also uh, to use citizen science or crowdsourcing to actually validate uh, the results that are obtained from the automated data mining. Now we do this, and we do this in Europe because, I don't know how many people are aware, but the high resolution stereo camera, uh, which is clearly archived here at the PSA, and uh, which Stefan is uh, very intimately involved in, uh, in Berlin at the Free University, um, is the most accurate mapped data set of Mars. Uh, in fact, um, most recent results indicate uh, that it has an accuracy on the order of about nine meters um, to give you an absolute position of any pixel in the nature of C image. The digital terrain models, because uh, the HRSC uh, is inherently a stereophotogrammetric device, it's a mapping device, um, also creates these 3D models together with the terrain corrected images. And so what we're doing is we're using that as a base data set and we're automatically co-registering all the NASA orbital images uh, to the HRC data. That includes the ones from Mars Reconnaissance, from CTX and HiRISE. And we're doing this uh, and uh, each member of the team has got uh, a group uh, that they are at the moment forming uh, to try and find um, and get much more information on key dynamic features which have been discovered. Now, of course, we do expect to discover new stuff. You know, we wouldn't be doing this if we weren't interested in doing that. So, in terms of the technology involved, we're using automated co-registration based upon feature points. I'll show you a few examples of that, but there'll be much more detail um, in the uh, lightning talks, uh, I believe, tomorrow. And um, <coughs> together with the, uh, we are also creating high resolution DTMs at um, 18 meters from CTX and uh, three quarters of a meter from um, high rise. Uh, <coughs> and we are using the HRC data uh, where um, individual strips are available, but also, as you'll hear later in this meeting, there are also now whole quad sheets of mosaic products uh, available. Uh, with an initial evaluation by the HRC CHI team coming up shortly. So I want to expand the data analysis to exploit the data that's contained within the archive, and we want to do it using um, big data analytics, as it's sometimes called, or uh, big data or crowdsourcing or cloud computing, whatever. Uh, and uh, the human element of this will be with the citizen science. So, the primary scientific objective of this is to look for changes in the Martian surface due to the action of erosion, whether it's dust, uh, whether it's boulders rolling down hills, uh, whether it might be or might not be uh, liquid water, um, dust storms, meteoritic impacts, permafrost changes, and um, <coughs> we're using data processed also to help select regions of interest in the future, and you'll hear a number of talks about that later on specifically to do with the XMR um, rover. So, 
what have we found out to date? Well, um, there have been systematic observations, clearly, of things like gullies uh, and dust storms in the literature over the last 40 years. Uh, but really, the most exciting changes have been um, observed in high-rise images. And what's probably less well known is, well, how did they manage to pick an area uh, to image with high-rise when it has such a tiny little footprint of only on the order of 10 kilometers across? Um, how do you work out? Well, that's because you can see it in CTX. And because there's systematic observations uh, using C CTX, um, and for example, impact craters are observed like this. So this comes from the high-rise team from uh, and uh, Al McEwen, and uh, you can see the various variety of different kinds of features, and you can see their geographic distribution. And a point worth noting: all the black features here. Obviously, uh, this is not a map to scale because these black features are not the sizes of the impact craters. But you can notice that uh, you have spatial aggregation in certain regions. Now, it's believed the reason for that is because of the fact that they have a layer of dust from thermal inertia measurements taken by Themis. So there is increasing evidence, and certainly we're beginning to find uh, that um, as we do larger and larger data sets for co-registration, um, that dynamic phenomena are very widespread. Uh, but it's unclear how much of the surface, uh, of course, has been observed repeatedly over the last 50 years. So I'm not going to describe in detail the various different components of the project, albeit uh, that the first phase, which is coming to an end in June, will be the development of a variety of terrain modeling systems, automated co-registration, and the fundamentals of the data mining is drawing to a close, with the second part to actually do the systematic data processing of three quarters of a million images. All the data from PSA and PDS have been downloaded. It's all in the public domain. But of course, we've let everyone here at PSA know, and we've let people in the JPL imaging node who've been very helpful as well. And in the third phase of the project, which is the citizen science uh, part after we've done the uh, data mining due at the end of next year. So what do we have today? Well, we have almost half of the surface of Mars mapped uh, with 3D models from 50 to 100 meters uh, from HRC. And it's interesting to uh, note the fact that um, uh, the surface of Mars is almost exactly the same in terms of about 150 million square kilometers as the surface of the Earth. And only in the course of the last three years has the ASTA, uh, Japanese-American uh, data set, been processed and released in terms of a 3D model, albeit at 30 meters, but realistically it's only 70 meter resolution. So here you can see an example of the coverage that, uh, that we have. And of course, some of these uh, areas are completely covered, so you can make mosaics from them. And as I say, you'll hear about those a little later on. Now, in addition, uh, it's been published in the literature some years ago. Um, it's possible to create multi-resolution digital terrain models. Um, uh, the HRSC is inherently uh, referenced to MOLA, because MOLA data is included in the uh, along track bundle adjustment. And um, <coughs> uh, we developed technology for automatically registering uh, CTX terrain models uh, to the HRC terrain models and uh, the high rise to the CTX, or in some cases where there's little CTX available, uh, the high rise to uh, the HRSC data. Now, most recently, um, a system from the University of Seoul, from my uh, former colleague Chungrat Kim, um, has been developed for automatically producing 3D models. And here's shown an example over the MSL landing site, um, over the Murray Spirit, and also over the Murby uh, Opportunity. And um, come along and hear a lightning talk by Vladimir Yurchov uh, tomorrow at 3.25 to learn more about that. And um, with uh, my colleague Panos Seridopoulos, uh, um, an analysis was done using the data that we just heard about, the ODE uh, data from WashU, and doing an analysis, making the assumption uh, that the accuracy of the georeferencing is only to the order of 600 meters, um, and therefore creating a pixel map in a GIS 
which will shortly be launched as part of the WebGIS for the project, uh, to actually tell you for every single pixel how many observations and also allow you eventually to drill down and get all of the relevant information about every single observation uh, that's acquired over that particular portion. And one thing you can notice, uh, this shows us all the observations better than 20 meters uh, over the entire time period from 76 flew to 2013. And you can see our obvious places like uh, Valles Marineris, for example, um, are covered. But there are, uh, uh, and also Olympus Mons, but there are less obvious places that are covered, and you can see that the poles um, have a great deal of coverage. So, um, not quite sure what happened there. Uh, that went to lightning. So this is the result of an automated co-registration, and you'll hear about this as well tomorrow. Um, I don't know why it doesn't like... <laughs> so I'll just keep flicking between them. And something you can notice immediately is that uh, they're, uh, apart from the fact that they're locked to each other uh, and to sub-pixel resolution, and we are um, taking five-meter CTX images and co-registering them to 12 and a half, is that there's quite an element of change. You can see dark streaks appearing um, between August 2005 and February 2009. So we process all of this data uh, using... Uh, the computing system that we have uh, at UCL. How do we make it available to you, the community, uh, to our colleagues? How do we link across? Well, firstly, um, uh, let me say that uh, Stefan Gautzold, who's in charge of the GIS aspects uh, of the web GIS, together with colleague Michaela Giordano, who's also going to talk about what we've been doing on the rover side with the Proja system. And this shows a very, very early very simple-minded system using the UMMS from the University of Minnesota map server. Um, and we're using OGC protocols. Uh, and as you'll hear from Michaela, uh, <coughs> um, at 3 o'clock tomorrow afternoon, oh, sorry, today, uh, he will also explain that at last uh, the open GI systems actually understand there is another planet apart from the Earth. Uh, and therefore, it actually has the characteristics here you can see individual footprints uh, of high-rise or of uh, CTX. And one of the things that is a little surprising, because you go on to Google Earth, and you can see, uh, or Google Earth, Mars, uh, that Mars seems to be completely covered in CTX. Well, that may be the case, but only 1%, around 1% of the surface is actually covered in stereo. And the reason why we're showing the footprints here is because we're interested in those regions that we're going to process into fully automated 3D models. So, in addition, uh, there's one other aspect, which is uh, three-dimensional from Ecole Polytechnique um, de Lausanne, uh, which are going to include Marsis data, so you'll be able to see where all the Marsis footprints are, get 3D, uh, the 3D profiles, compare the 3D profiles uh, with uh, the data itself, understand where there are clutter effects or ionospheric delays. So that's an additional part of the WebGIS. And as I mentioned earlier, the WebGIS is also meant to serve through the Zooniverse project at the University of Chicago, um, and this is run primarily uh, at the University of Nottingham. Uh, and what we're looking at here is um, uh, this intersection between human computation, citizen science, uh, and gaming. And um, those are the areas that uh, we are exploring and have already launched the first project uh, on Planet 4 on Zooniverse a few weeks ago. So, uh, analysis was done of uh, user requirements. That's all available on the website. Um, and uh, <coughs> this analysis included uh, trying to understand for those features that have been identified in high-rise and CTX images what could also be seen uh, potentially in H or C uh, and what would have been seen in the past in mock uh, images and possibly even going back as far as Viking Orbiter. Here you can see uh, the different scales, uh, up to 10 meters, 10 to 50, 50 to 100, uh, greater than 100, and also uh, whether or not these are positive or negative uh, relief features. Um, and this is an example, rather dramatic example, taken from 
Russell et al. 2008, of avalanches observed, uh, but also the avalanches can actually be observed in CTX, so even potentially uh, uh, HRSC as well. Now, the automated data mining aspects which are being developed at the moment want to find all these features and find them all the way back to 1976 uh, when the first Viking Orbiter uh, image data was acquired. Um, and of course, this includes uh, new impact craters that have been done manually by Malin and Edget uh, at Malin Space Systems, as well as uh, fully automatically, and there's many, many different systems that have been used for that purpose. So at the moment, those algorithms are being developed and tested. Um, so in conclusion, uh, and I think I've done my 15, uh, our next steps are uh, the automated high-rise and CTX DTM processing system is in the final phase of development. Um, the data itself will be processed in the second half of this year, and that will be integrated into this new web GIS based on Progis technology uh, developed jointly with the University of Nottingham, uh, being developed over the same time period. And in parallel to that, the automated data mining processing system is being developed and the fully automated co-registration of all the NASA EDI images uh, to CTX or HRSC author-rectified images uh, will commence next year, followed by the automated data mining, uh, followed by the citizen science validation. Now, all, it's planned that all these products will be released through the WebGIS uh, in late 2016. But of course, the question is, what next? Uh, if it's actually as useful as we believe it's going to be, uh, then of course it would make a dramatic difference uh, for any scientist interested in studying of Mars. Uh, but of course, as you can expect with an EU project, uh, there are no resources whatsoever uh, to transfer uh, the results um, or the WebGIS itself. And so that's still an open question which we hope to debate further. Thank you.